Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to the start of my read in the new year vlog. So um, if you saw my goals video, I had said maybe vlogs would come back because this is a really easy way to like update you guys on my reading. It's all, I'm obviously on the go, like just super easy and I can do it as I think about it. So I'm going to try vlogging readathons and see how it goes and then go from there. So um, it's January 3rd. The readathon started on the 1st, but um, I just like have not gotten my stuff together to um, film and I've only finished almost two things. So I finished Golden Girl by Ellen Hildebrand and I really liked it. So this is about an author who um, she is like kind of well loved in the community of Nantucket where all Ellen Hildebrand's books are set and she is this famous author. She's got three kids. Um, her and her husband are divorced. He left her for his like assistant and um, but she seemingly is kind of a golden girl and she has like this ex-boyfriend who um, is now a famous musician and has written, 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 written a song called Golden Girl. Um, long story short, she right at the beginning of the book gets killed in a hit and run accident. She's out running and gets hit. And so the rest of the book is really interesting. Like I feel like it is unique and I haven't really read anything like it. So she is in like kind of a limbo stage and she can see um, her family and like what's going on. And she has three nudges she can use to like kind of influence things. Um, so that was really cool. And we learn a lot about her past and her like current situation and kind of how other people view her, what's going on in all of her kids' lives. One of her kids has recurrent miscarriages. One of her daughters, um, that's a daughter, obviously what her other daughter, um, is into like drugs and some things. Um, and then her son has a secret that he's keeping as well. And it's his best friend who is almost like a fourth kid to her, um, that found her. And so he's a suspect. And so there's a lot going on there. Um, there's a lot of characters in this book, but I didn't feel like it was confusing. Uh, me talking about it, it might sound confusing, but I didn't feel like it was really like hard to understand as you read it. And I thought it was really different than other things I had read. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. I gave it, I think four stars probably. Um, but I like that one a lot. And that one had water on the cover cause she's like walking on the beach. Um, so then I picked up Souvenir by Therese Ann Fowler. And this one, the back of the book is very vague and it said something kind of like a first love, second chance. So that's why I bought it. And I'm not going to say a whole lot about this book. I have like 10 minutes left in the audiobook, So I'm going to go ahead and say that I finished it, even though I haven't quite. Um, but this book, so this is about a woman who married to, to save her family. So she, um, well, her family was really in dire straits financially. And so she married somebody who offered to kind of take care of her and her family. And so she did that, although she had been in love with somebody else since she was a kid. And so now she's a grown up. She's got a like 16 year old daughter and, um, she finds out some stuff that then her, her, um, first love comes back. So, uh, it sounds like a romance from what I'm saying and from the back of the book, but I would say this is definitely women's fiction because it's definitely more about our main character and the journey that she's on as opposed to the romance or lack thereof between her and her husband or her and her first love. So, um, really liking this one too. Both of these books are like my bread and butter. I love kind of hard hitting women's fiction and this um, souvenir I would say is definitely hard hitting. It doesn't necessarily advertise itself as that, but I, um, would definitely say it is. It's pretty emotional and pretty hard hitting. So, um, those are the books I've been reading. Great way to start off the new year. I also read Amelia Bedelia shapes up with my daughter and this one was fun. Um, it's number five in the Amelia Bedelia series and her class does a pentathlon. Pen I think that's what it's called. There, there's five like kind of track and field events that her class is doing because they're studying ancient Greece. And um, Amelia Bedelia at first, she's like picked last for all the sports and she's not feeling very confident, but then she works hard and she does well. So love that. That one's under 250 pages and it was a good read. So January 3rd, already got three prompts knocked out. Loving it. So I hope you guys are having a great day and we'll talk to you when I finish something else. Hey everyone, it's later the same day and I forgot to tell you that I finished A Mother's Goodbye um, by Kate Hewitt and this one doesn't count for any of the prompts and it's not part of the readathon because I have been physically reading it 
for a while. So this is about a mother who she gets uh, like kind of accidentally pregnant with her fourth kid and she knows they cannot take care of it because they are really struggling to get by. They've got three. Um, Her husband's got an injury so he can't work and they are just in a rough spot already. So she knows she has to give up her fourth baby. So she meets somebody and um, this woman named Grace decides to take her baby, adopt her baby. And Grace is really, um, has a lot of money. She's a lawyer or something. She lives in the city. They live in New Jersey. Um, And the two women like kind of become friends, but they're just so different, like from such different backgrounds and um, just such different personality types that they kind of struggle. And then the baby's born and they continue to be in each other's lives, but it's definitely with tension until something happens that kind of breaks that and makes them friends. And I didn't know anything about this book going in, so I didn't know if it was going to take like a sinister twist, and it didn't, but it did take like a heartbreaking twist. So again, this is the exact type of book I love. This is women's fiction with a hard-hitting element. Um, Some of the themes that are going throughout these books are very similar, and I have found that that's like, I guess, what I like, because these three books... um, that I've talked about in this vlog have been some of my favorite types of books. They're all probably like four, four and a half stars. None of them are perfect, but they all have kept me really engaged. And like this one, I there were times throughout this past like month that I just didn't feel like mentally in the right headspace to pick this up. And yet I never forgot details. Like it's very vivid. It's Grace and Heather and they are very vivid. And um, I just really like this book. So this is another one, A Mother's Goodbye by Kate Hewitt. And I really want to pick up more from Kate Hewitt because I've never heard of her and never read her, but I really enjoyed this one. So just thought I would tell you guys about it. Hey everyone. So clearly I'm off my vlogging game because um, this is going to be the last update as it's maybe the second update, but um, whatever. So for the read in the new year readathon, I finished two more things. So unexpected, um, like to fit into the prompts, we, Ainsley and I read Freddie's Amazing Bakery, and the first one is the raspberry mix-up, I think, and this was so darn cute. So, um, this is a middle grade book, and it is basically like the Great British Bake Off in middle grade book, and it's so cute. So, um, Freddie is this guy, this little boy, he's got a bakery in the small town of Belleville, and he's really good, but um, he's also just the really kind, sweet little boy. And the town is having a cook a baking competition um, to see who can be like the new baker for the main hotel. And so he enters as well as like the bad guy, Bernard, and a bunch of other people. And like Freddie goes along helping people, but Bernard tries to sabotage him. And it's totally, you feel like you are watching like the Great British Bake Off or whatever, like the timing and they're like one minute, go, blah, blah, you know, and there's the tension of something goes wrong. And it was just so cute. We loved it. So that one has food. It's a part of a series and it's under 250 pages. So that hits a lot. But then I also finished The Bright Side Running Club by Josie Lloyd, I think. Um, I'll put a picture up in case I'm wrong. But um, this one was good. So this is my NetGalley arc and it comes out, I think, at the beginning of February. But I know it's a re-release, so you may be able to get it already by the time you see this. Um, Anyway, so it is about this woman who gets diagnosed with breast cancer and she runs this little like boutique shop that has like cute home goods and stuff, I think. And she runs it with her brother's ex-girlfriend. They used to be friends, but then now I don't know if she's great or not. And um, our main character sees this girl running one day and somehow like strikes up a friendship with her and they start running together and the Bright Side Running Club is formed. So it's the majority of it is four women who are all going through cancer treatments and they are using running and using each other. And like their um, bond comes quick and it comes deep and I love that and I have experienced that through running and I really related to that. My complaint about this book though is that like there are a lot of characters and a lot of relationships and things that are really shallow. Uh, Like there's just a little too much going on. Like I don't feel like I knew the other women in the Bright Side Running Club as much as I wanted to and like I just finished this not long ago and I'm struggling to remember like I know she has kids but I can't remember how many um, because the kids were like kind of in it, kind of not. Her husband I remember but then she's also got like other friends outside of the running club that um, again were in there but like 
didn't really serve much of a purpose. And so I think this book could have used a little more focus um, and like a little more depth and not as much like width. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but like there were a lot, there was a lot going on and I wanted a little bit more deeper connection to the character. So otherwise though, I liked it. I still gave it like four stars and this was a book that I didn't spend money on. Um, a new to me author. And I think that's it. So um, that's a wrap on this. Today is January 7th, the end of the readathon. And I do still have one prompt left uh, his, to read a historical. And it's just not going to happen because I'm not in the mood to read one. And so I don't want to like force it and not like a book because I'm not in the mood. Um, so Chloe from the past would be cringing to hear me say like, I'm quitting on this. I'm just going to let that prompt go. But this is the new me. This is 2022, Chloe, accepting and just going with the mood. So um, that is everything. Oh, Sheena, thank you. And I know there's a co-host too. Um, thank you guys so much for hosting me. This readathon is a really fun way to like get started, get in the new year and um, kind of focus my reading a little bit. So I look forward to doing more readathons um, throughout this year and just kind of keeping things fun and short. So Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night or weekend or week whenever you're watching this. And thank you so much for watching.